Hey, it's John at Smart Edition Academy, and in today's video, we're gonna go over the chemistry section of the TEAS 7 exam. This is a subject that a lot of students are saying they're having a hard time with. We're hearing it over and over again in our Facebook study group. So we have decided to release all of our chemistry video lessons from our T7 online course, uh, Smart Edition Academy. And this one is going to be on chemical solutions. Now, wait a minute. Oh, there's something really cool over here you guys gotta check out. You guys see this guy? So like I was saying, uh, so we're putting out all these videos so that we can help you guys out. Now check out the links in the description below. There is a link to a free T7 practice test. There's a link to our uh, Facebook study group and there is a link to our T7 online course. Now that online course has 100 video lessons just like the one you're about to watch. So if you like these videos and you wanna see more, you can check out that link. And then of course, if you like the video, leave a comment below. Let us know if you have any questions on anything, we can help you guys out. So what is a mixture? What is a solution? Well, they can be considered one of the same, but it truly just depends. Let's dive deeper. So in our previous science lessons, we have discovered that matter can have physical and chemical properties. As we know, physical properties are observed without changing the composition of the substance, while chemical properties are. Similarly, substances can be combined physically, but not chemically. In other words, there may be different substances mixed together, but it's still possible to separate them from one another if need be. For example, if you put sand and water together in a glass, it's still just sand and water. It's possible to separate them from each other even though they've been put into the same container. When elements and compounds are physically combined, they form a mixture. These mixtures may be described as either heterogeneous or homogeneous. Hetero is a Latin root, meaning different or dissimilar. So when we use it in biology to describe alleles, it makes sense that when an offspring inherits two different alleles, one from each parent, it is described as heterozygous. In this instance, a heterogeneous mixture is when substances physically combine, but they are unevenly mixed, making it possible to see the individual components. So think back to our example of the sand and water. When you put both into a container, you can still see the sand and water individually. Sand is likely at the bottom due to its density and solid phase versus the liquid phase of water. But the components may not be as visibly separated as in that example. Heterogeneous mixtures may also be described as a suspension, because while particles may appear dissolved into a liquid phase of the solution, there are in fact larger particles that are not dissolved, but suspended in solution. With suspensions, it is likely that if the mixture were to sit still for a period of time, the suspended particles would actually settle to more clearly separate out of solution to make it seem more visible. Think about some common products you might have to shake before using, especially those food products in your fridge. Some common household salad dressings that contain an oil substance are likely to be shaken for best use. But if you've ever gone a long time in between kneading your salad dressing, you might notice that it does in fact settle and you can see the oil and water actually form two separate layers in the bottle. Let's think of another item, perhaps your orange juice in the morning. Now this one may not seem so easy, and we will look at it again when we examine other mixtures. But if you look at the bottom of an orange juice container, you will likely see pulp and other small particles suspended in the solution. Although they may be harder to see because the color of the juice is overwhelming, you can determine the unevenness of the mixture if you can ever recall a moment where you've taken a sip and actually gotten a mouthful of pulp. The pulp is that component not evenly distributed within the juice mixture. It's just sitting in the substance. But let's turn back to our other type of mixture. Alternatively to heterogeneous, we have homogeneous mixtures. Homo is a Latin root meaning the same. So bringing it back to our biology example to describe alleles, we use the word homozygous to describe when a child inherits the same type of allele from each parent. Here with this chemistry term, a homogeneous mixture is when the substances mix evenly and it is impossible to see individual components. One rather unique example is wax. When you think about it, wax is a uniform substance, but it is unique because specific particles are dispersed within another and cannot be separated out through normal means. These homogeneous solutions have a specific name, colloids. Think about trying to separate the constituents of wax, or another common example, lipstick, a very waxy-like substance. Not so easy, right? But before we dive into our examples, we should further understand some of the terminology that surrounds homogeneous mixtures. Solubility is the ability of a substance to dissolve in another substance. 
When a substance cannot dissolve, it is considered insoluble. So bringing it back to our example of sand and water, the sand is an insoluble substance. But if we were to put sugar or even salt into the water and mix it in, the individual particles would dissolve and be completely mixed in. Soluble. When substances dissolve, like in the case of sugar and water, they form a solution. The water is a solvent and sugar is the solute. The solute can be any particle that will dissolve, and the solvent is the likely liquid that is going to dissolve the particle substance. Anything that dissolves in water would be considered an aqueous solution. Now with any solution, it can be described as saturated or unsaturated, and these terms refer to how much of the solute is dissolved, or the concentration of the solution. Solubility is the amount of solute that can dissolve in the substance. So when a solution has the ability to dissolve more solute, it is considered unsaturated because the solubility has not been maxed out. When the concentration has maxed out the solubility, meaning no more solute can dissolve into the solution, it is considered saturated. Let's look at the solubility curves graph. This graph here depicts four very common solutes and their solubility potential in 100 grams of water. As you can see, temperature can play an important role in solubility because heat can be considered a catalyst for a reaction but more to come on that in our energy diagrams discussions. Let's look at some trends, like with sodium chloride. This curve is unique in that heat does little to nothing to help the solubility of the solute. This is quite different from calcium chloride, where the solubility increases exponentially from zero to less than 30 degrees Celsius. The reaction of calcium chloride is also quite the opposite of cerium-3 sulfate, which is one of the very few solutes that actually decrease in solubility with a rise in temperature. It is important to reiterate that the solubility of each solvent reflects when there is 100 grams of water. This would affect the concentration, as we've said, and values are comparable because the solvent is consistent. However, concentration has the potential to be expressed in many different ways. For example, molarity is a way of expressing the number of moles of a substance in one liter of solution, whereas molality expresses the number of moles of a substance per kilogram of solvent. But what are moles? Moles are another unit used within chemistry that expresses the mass based upon the number of atoms of the substance. This concept utilizes what is called Avogadro's constant, but this term is a more complex matter, no pun intended, and not necessary for understanding the concentration of a solution at the moment. All you need to know is that moles is a chemistry unit, and it is used to express concentrations. It can be used to represent mole fractions, or moles of a solute in comparison to the moles of a solution. If this concept of moles is still confusing, it might be helpful to consider another concentration expression, percent composition by mass. Here, we are just expressing the concentration as the mass of solute per unit of the mass of solution. It's just like moles, but instead of moles, mass. For now, this concludes Smart Edition's video lesson on chemical solutions. For more information, please refer to your text and continue watching our series on chemistry lessons.